When Vishwas Kumar Ramesh opened his eyes, he was surrounded by heat, darkness, and the twisted wreckage of a jetliner that had seconds earlier been 600 feet in the air. Flames licked at torn insulation, seats were ripped from their rails, and cabin walls had collapsed into jagged metal. Somehow, seat 11A remained anchored and intact. It was one of the few parts of the aircraft that hadn't been torn apart, crushed, or incinerated in the explosion and impact. He was injured, disoriented, and alone. But he was alive. What caused this devastating crash? How did he survive? And what does this mean for the future of aviation? This isn't just the story of a plane crash. It's a brief insight into systemic failure, corporate accountability, and one man's miraculous survival. On June 12, 2025, Air India Flight 171 prepared for a routine journey from Ahmedabad to London Gatwick. Among the 230 passengers were families reuniting, students returning to their studies, and business travellers attending critical meetings. The aircraft was commanded by Captain Sumit Sabawal, a seasoned veteran pilot with over 8,200 flying hours, supported by First Officer Clive Kundar, known for his calm demeanour and precision in the cockpit. Though skies were clear, scorching temperatures of nearly 42 degrees Celsius posed significant challenges for aircraft performance during takeoff. Flight 171 was operating at full capacity. Every seat filled, fuel tanks loaded for the long haul to London, and cargo compartments packed. The aircraft was close to its maximum certified takeoff weight. In these hot, high density altitude conditions, even the smallest aerodynamic inefficiencies could dramatically impact lift and climb rate. At precisely 13.39 local time, Flight 171 lifted off from Ahmedabad's runway 23. Within 30 seconds, the aircraft, carrying a full load of passengers, fuel and cargo, reached just 625 feet before beginning a slow, fatal descent. Captain Sumit Sabawal's voice, strained and urgent, crackled over the radio. Mayday, 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 no power, no thrust, it's going down. It was a mayday that conveyed not just distress, but confusion. Eyewitnesses on the ground described a strange sight. The plane seemed to hover, struggling to climb, its nose pitched unusually high. Just 10 seconds later, the final transmission faded into silence. At 13, 39, 40, Flight 171 slammed into the edge of a medical college building, just past the runway perimeter. Witnesses reported a thunderous impact, followed by flames and black smoke rising into the midday sky. Amid the devastation, one man emerged, Vishwas Kumar Ramesh, a British citizen visiting family in India. In an interview, he said, I don't know how I survived. I saw people dying in front of my eyes. He was seated in seat 11A, which is located just above the wing, close to the structural heart of the aircraft. Perhaps that's what saved him. But to understand how he could possibly have survived, we need to look deeper at the aircraft itself, what it was designed to do, and where things went wrong. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner was engineered to transform air travel, featuring advanced composite materials and next-generation Gen X engines by General Electric. The Dreamliner introduced groundbreaking innovations it was the first major commercial jet to be built primarily from carbon fibre composite materials, making up roughly 50% of its structure by weight. This allowed for greater fuel economy, reduced maintenance needs, and a higher cabin pressurisation altitude for improved passenger comfort. 
the 787 also featured advanced aerodynamics, including raked wingtips and a fly-by-wire system that continuously adjusted flaps and spoilers in real time to optimize lift and efficiency. The plane was designed not just to compete, but to redefine expectations. However, the 787's revolutionary design wasn't without flaws. In 2013, battery overheating grounded the entire global Dreamliner fleet temporarily. Engine troubles plagued the aircraft too. In 2016, the FAA urgently directed repairs after ice on Gen X fan blades caused serious engine damage, raising fears of simultaneous dual engine failures. Similar issues persisted, including a 2018 Scoot 7879 incident, where an engine shut down mid-flight due to a blocked inlet filter, and a Jetstar Airways 7878 engine failure attributed to gearbox problems. These repeated warnings hinted at deeper systemic risks lurking within the Dreamliner's celebrated innovations. Within hours of the incident, Investigators sifted through the wreckage, meticulously documenting each fragment. Black boxes, though severely damaged, were recovered and rushed to the NTSB's advanced lab for analysis. Early evidence painted a disturbing picture. Landing gear inexplicably extended, generating immense drag. Flaps, crucial for lift during takeoff, seemingly misconfigured and perhaps most alarmingly, the Ram Air Turbine, or RAT, had deployed, a critical indicator of complete system power failure. On July 12, 2025, India's Ministry of Civil Aviation released their report on the incident, revealing a finding that sent the internet into a frenzy. The report alleges that, just moments after takeoff, one of the pilots transitioned the fuel cutoff switches for both engine one and engine two from the run position to the cutoff position, effectively starving the engines of fuel necessary to operate. Shortly after, the cockpit voice recorder captured one of the pilots asking the other, why did he cut off? To which the other pilot responds that he did not do so. Why would someone switch the engine fuel switches off during takeoff? According to experts, the switch is only turned to cut off in two scenarios, when the plane has landed safely and the engines are no longer needed, or in the case of an engine failure, in which case the switches are turned off, then immediately back on. Did the pilot think the plane was losing power and try to save it by switching off the fuel and back on? Experts claim that this wouldn't be the correct procedure in this scenario, and that the plane should have been allowed to climb further before attempting any mitigation procedures. Accidental switch movement is out of the question too, as the switches are a heavy, spring-loaded, gated type that require the operator to pull it up out of its socket, move down, then release. Social media erupted with theories, some alleging sabotage, others suggesting pilot error or corporate negligence. Public sentiment surged towards skepticism about corporate transparency, fueled by Boeing's and GE's troubled histories. This wasn't Boeing's first crisis. The company had already weathered two fatal 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019, killing 346 people and exposing a disturbing trend of internal failures. Investigations revealed that Boeing knowingly withheld critical information about the MCAS flight control system from regulators and pilots alike. A 2021 Senate report cited seven whistleblowers from Boeing, GE and the FAA, warning of fundamental problems with safety oversight across the aerospace industry. General Electric wasn't without scrutiny either. Richard Cusera, a former lead inspector at GE, alleged that he was pushed out after raising concerns about inadequate inspections in the production of 777X and Gen X engines. His claims pointed to a culture that discouraged transparency and favored speed over diligence. Boeing has paid over $4 billion in safety-related penalties since 2000. 
In 2024 alone, the company was fined nearly $700 million for criminal violations. Critics argue that these penalties pale in comparison to the systemic problems they reflect. A corporate culture where regulatory compliance is treated as a formality and ethical red flags are sidelined in pursuit of quarterly earnings. The Air India crash brought renewed scrutiny to these institutions. How many warnings were ignored? How many lessons from past tragedies went unheeded? And how do you hold a $164 billion corporation accountable for human lives lost? Behind these crashes lie economic pressures, cost-cutting, outsourcing and regulatory capture that quietly undermine aviation safety. Airlines now outsource more than half of their maintenance to external repair stations, often overseas, to reduce operational costs. A Purdue University study highlighted that outsourcing can significantly compromise maintenance quality when oversight is insufficient. The FAA has admitted handing off substantial regulatory oversight duties to manufacturers like Boeing, leaving critical safety evaluations in corporate hands. India's rapidly expanding aviation sector further intensifies these issues, stretching oversight bodies thin and amplifying risks associated with rapid growth and inadequate resources. Air India and its parent company, Tata Group, have announced a multi-tiered compensation package. Families of the deceased and the sole survivor are receiving an interim compensation of 25 lakh rupees, about $30,000. Tata has also pledged an ex gratia payment of 1 crore rupees, or approximately $120,000, for each victim's next of kin, including those killed on the ground. In addition, they are covering all medical expenses for the injured. Under the Montreal Convention of 1999, Air India is also legally obligated to pay a minimum of 1.5 crore rupees, roughly $180,000 per victim. But no amount of money can fill the void left behind. As memorials grow and loved ones grieve, the world watches to see who will be held accountable, and perhaps more importantly, the changes that will be made to ensure this never happens again. We entrust our lives to complex systems, machines, corporations, regulators, and when they fail, the human cost is incalculable. If this video moved you, don't let it end here. Share it, discuss it, ask the questions no one dares to ask, demand real accountability from the corporations, regulators, and decision makers responsible, because only scrutiny can prevent the next disaster. If you enjoyed this story, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when we upload more impactful, relevant, and important stories like this. Thanks for watching.